It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Los Angeles Chargers and the Tennessee Titans. All that and more coming up next. Being located in the Music City, this building has hosted a lot of great music acts since its inception. But this is what she was made for, NFL football. And that's what we have today in Nashville at Nissan Stadium. Today, we've got a fun AFC matchup on tap as it'll be the L.A. Chargers taking on the Tennessee Titans. Brandon Gordon joined by Tennessee Sports Hall of Famer Charles Davis. And C.D., these Titans stumbled a bit last year. They were coming off six straight winning seasons, a number one seed in 2021, but they fell to 7-10 and 10 a year ago. A major surprise because it certainly looked like they had the division locked up around midseason. The big key for them, more consistency at the quarterback position, keeping their guy healthy and being able to run the football as impressively as they've done in the past. And meanwhile, for the Chargers, you know, they have the pieces in place. They were a playoff team in 2022. What do you see for them this year? You give this team full help throughout the season, and they have a chance to be not just a playoff team again, but beyond, because they'll scare the heck out of you on the offensive side of the ball. Defensively, that's where they have to start playing a little bit better. Now the kicker, that's Cameron Dicker, set to get us started. And off we go from Nashville. And from the end zone, here's Julius Chestnut. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line. So bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision. Loses him about four yards. Here comes the Tennessee offense. And you see Ryan Tannehill leading them out. Those who expected Ryan Tannehill to go quietly into the night after the Titans drafted Will Levis. Well, they clearly don't know this man well at all. He's a fighter and former comeback player of the year and expects to have his best season yet as a pro in this campaign. Tannehill to the air right off the bat. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. And we're going to see this offense try and spread the field a little bit and utilize the outside third of the field, especially against man coverage. But that time, the defense was up to the task, forcing the incompletion. From the 21, it's second and 10. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Oh, man, for him to be that wide open and drop it. Sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And, yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. That's caught. Nick Westbrook Aquino with it. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. 21 yards there on third down. Well, this is an awfully tough route to defend in man coverage because he lines up on the right and then runs a crossing route back to the other side of the field. So as a defender, you're not only trailing him the whole way, you're also looking out for your own guys to make sure you don't get yourself picked off. And then you can't catch up in time to prevent the completion. On first and 10, Tannehill. And his throw here is incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. The NFL's active leader in rush yards, Derrick Henry. And very little daylight there. He'll get a couple up to the 44. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Back to throw, Tannehill. And the Chargers rush is going to get there. Down he goes. They bring a man off the corner that time, and he gets home for a loss of six. 
It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. So the Charger offense making its way out and at the controls is the league's second leading passer a year ago. At 25 years of age out of Oregon, it's Justin Herbert. The Chargers just continue to improve and take steps forward under the quiet leadership of Herbert, who's been the most productive quarterback in league history through his first three seasons. Over 4,700 yards last year, he's expecting to crack the 5,000-yard mark in this season. Herbert and the Chargers now with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Now the seven-year veteran, Austin Eckler, and he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. They suspected that it was a power play up the middle coming at them, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. From the 22, here's second and eight. Once more, here's Eckler. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. Eckler's long been one of the most underrated players in the NFL, but he's now starting to get his due. 915 yards, a career best last season, with 13 touchdowns on the ground. Herbert on first down now. That's caught by the rookie, Quentin Johnston. Two chunk plays in a row. The last one was over 20 yards, and so is this one. And this is exactly the kind of drive you're hoping for out of the gates. They're mixing the run and the pass well, keeping this defense off balance early. And they're on the march here with another first down. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 as they're down to the 29-yard line. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Well, that's absolutely going to fire this defense up. They made it their mission to deny that completion, and they came through with a nice hit and knocked it incomplete. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. Play action this time for Justin Herbert. They'll find Everett there, complete. That one goes for 24 yards. Boy, how about the speed with which this offense can get down the field? It's taken them no time at all to get down here, and now they're set up with a first and goal. Five yards from the end zone, first and goal. Herbert will give this one to Eckler. He'll get two out of that run, and it's going to bring up a second and goal. All of a sudden, those lanes that were there earlier in the drive dry up near the goal line. That's a good job defensively to diagnose that and stop it for a very short pickup. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. They hand off to their big tight end. And they'll get it down just shy of the goal line at about the one. Call it a gain of a couple. The defense stiffening here. It's third and goal. A lot can go wrong when you call a play like this down in the red zone. But that's where you appreciate this from your head coach. He's not afraid to trust his guys to do the right thing. And as a player, that means an awful lot. Now Herbert, third and goal. Feeling the pressure here and taken down. A sack back at the seventh. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Well, this has been a nice first drive for them, but right there, Charles, a sack on third and goal, that's tough. Yeah, and if you're the head coach and the offensive play caller, if you had any thoughts about going for it on fourth down, it's a much more difficult decision now. Likely kick the field goal, but if you're going to go for it, you better have the perfect play call on your sheet. Well, I don't know if they would have gone for it on fourth and goal anyway, but the sack on third down pretty much made their mind up for them. You're exactly right about that. And this is a tough place on the field to take a sack because, as you just noted, 
It took the decision making away from them. Now they have to go for a field goal instead of potentially going for it. Now, after the Dicker field goal, he's back out, ready to send it away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. The last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. And he'll get this up just shy of the 30. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. Wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Second and six, just inside the 30. Now Tannehill. That'll be complete to a conqueror. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. First catch for him. It's good for a dozen and a first down. <laughs> I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. We'll go down as a gain of six. And it'll be second down. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second and four. Here's Tannehill. His throw incomplete. So he's three for seven throwing the football right now. Not an awful start, but also not the sharpest of starts. No, I would agree with that. But if you're a confident quarterback and to play that position, you have to be. You just act like there's something wrong with the wind currents or something wrong with the ball. <laughs> it is not you. Keep throwing. That timing usually develops. To the air again, Tannehill. Open man is Burks, and he's got him. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers 40. The Titans get 14 yards there and move the chains as well. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. So from Charger territory now, here's a first and 10 right at the 40. Here's Tannehill. Over the middle, complete. That's Hopkins. So the completion gets him just a yard, and it's second down. Now Tannehill. And his throw is incomplete. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with a short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. Throwing again is Tannehill. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers' 24-yard line. That one good for a pickup of 15 for Tennessee. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field, and here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Tannehill on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. There is no denying they want to get him involved. That's already the fifth time that they've looked his way in this first quarter. So that tells me defensively that they want to insist on going in that direction 
Make sure you get your best people in the area to try and take that away. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. To throw is Tannehill. A short throw taken in by Conquo. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Again, Tannehill. And this is going to be incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. Well, how about the coverage we just saw break out on third down? Dime defense, blanketed the field with extra defensive backs and speed, unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. The Folks' kick is good, and that will tie us at 3-3. So a dozen plays on that drive CD, but in the end, it yields just the three points. Well, they were able to keep the defense on the field for a long time, but let's be honest about it. That was about as unsatisfying a drive as you're going to get. 12 plays and you only get three points out of it. Not quite the ending they were looking for. Field goals, all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The Chargers get set to go here for their second drive. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three and, points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Here's Eckler to begin the drive. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gain five yards on it, and to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Here's Herbert now on second down, and his throw is going to be incomplete. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches had told me in the past, the biggest teaching point. Get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Herbert now. And that is incomplete. Well, the other day they told us we've got third and five or less. We have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. On is the punter Scott here as he gets this one away. That's taken on the 25. 45 yards, that's what the punt goes for. Five on the return, and it'll be Titan football. Tennessee offense set to go again. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. They run on first down with Henry, but the hole evaporates quickly as he'll be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss. Couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. Henry again on second down. And he'll scratch out a yard up to the 30, and that's all. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it, 
brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over pursue and let a guy get a cutback lane on you he did that very well you praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball took a great angle right there Tannehill over the middle he has a conquer and he's got enough for the first across midfield to the 48 great way to convert on third down there 21 yards to play and that's well executed there on third down and I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision and QBs love to make that easy throw and they hooked up there for a first down a first down carry for Henry and they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half. And I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. A toss left. Henry. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly and the play comes to you, and sometimes you got to cover some ground to go make the play as we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might want to throw one over his head as this game progresses. They'll fake the handoff. Now Tannehill. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. On uh, fourth down, Ryan Stonehouse on to punt. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. The Charger drive about to get going. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that can put your team in some jeopardy? 3-3, a tight one after one on EA Sports. From up near the 40 now after the big play to start. Here's another first and 10. Up the middle with Eckler. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. 69 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here in this first half. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Here's Herbert. That is caught. It's Williams. And so close, he gets it to the one. Out of bounds right there. 23 yards on the play. How about the way they're moving the ball down the field? They had a big play a moment ago. Followed it up with another nice one here. And before you know it, already looking at first and goal. Eckler. No signal, and now they say he did not get in. He is stonewalled at the one. No gain on the play, and it's going to be second and goal. I don't know about you, Brandon, but I often think to myself, in these situations, I want a back who can create his own space, who can break tackles, and in a sense, become his own blocker. We don't have that guy in the game right now. Eckler again, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Chargers. Austin Eckler punching it in from a yard away, and the Chargers have taken the lead. 
So they brought the extra bulk in down on the one yard line and they're able to push this one across. Yeah, I can just see your face right now because I know we're mind melding on this one. Coach Madden would love this. Power football, hat on a hat, chest to chest, driving forward, touchdown. Extra point up and good by Dicker. And the lead is now 10 to three. So that drive spanned five plays. And it's Austin Eckler who finishes things off with a touchdown run. So after the touchdown, here's Dicker out to kick this one off. And able to get this out to the 25. And here comes Tennessee as they get sent to take the field. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three-point CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. That's caught by his tight end, Trevon Wesco. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you got a heck of a tight end candidate. Only a yard on the pickup, so from a good situation on second and two, it's now third and one. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Give them the third down conversion, five yards on the play. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled them up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Again, it's Henry. And there just continues to be nowhere to run. He's bottled up again at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Tenth carry now for Derrick Henry. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. An 11-yard pickup for the Titans and a first down. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Now the rookie third rounder from Tulane. It's Tajay Spears. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. It was Sebastian Joseph who got him down defensively. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know the securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. From the 50, it's Tannehill. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. Yeah, no question, he got to the QB late CD, and that's going to get a flag every time. Every single time. Because let's face it, the league is always going to have an emphasis on these calls. They want to take care of these quarterbacks who are in vulnerable positions when they're passing the football. After the penalty, it's Henry. And he'll take this down to the 33. Oh, 
that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. They'll try the air now with Tannehill. Got an open man to the right. That's Wesco. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Ball at the 14 for second and five. Now it's Tannehill off the bootleg. And he's got it. And the Titans are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just did the tip of the ball across the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. Henry, he is going nowhere in a hurry as he is going to lose yardage here in a big way. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Here's Tannehill on the slant. Burks, only three yards there on the completion. That'll lead to a third and goal. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Try to punch it in with Henry. And into the end zone for a Tennessee touchdown. Derrick Henry from a yard away, bowling his way in. And the Titans are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. Well, nothing fancy there, Charles. You had three tight ends on the field. They were going to run the football. The defense knew it, but the defense couldn't stop them. And I haven't met an offensive line yet that doesn't get more satisfaction out of running the football into the end zone than pass protecting. They had determination on their side, and they got it done. Full connects on the extra point, and we are even at 10 apiece. Ten apiece as the kicks away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. L.A. readies for its next possession. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Tight end has become a bigger and bigger part of the passing game in the NFL, but if you drop the football... That position can get swapped out with a, a wide receiver in that spot, a running back in that spot. There are other ways they can go if you're not going to catch the ball. And that's not just his first drop, his second drop of the game.
Justin Herbert looking to throw on second down. Pressure comes, and the Titans able to bring him down. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sand. Tried to create a little bit of that hocus pocus with some magic. But the defense, not impressed at all. They don't lose contain on this very dangerous runner, and they get a big stop. Got an extra defensive back out there for the Titans now here for third down. A shotgun snap for Herbert. Looking deep downfield. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Early on, the running game's been working well, and the offensive line has been pleased by that. The thought process there, catch those safeties creeping up, trying to help against the running game. They tried to hit them over the top unsuccessfully. Here's J.K. Scott now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. That's taken it around the 40. It's a net of 40 there. A punt of 48 and a return of 8. And they will take over first and 10. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And he is going to lose yardage here. Give all that credit defensively to Khalil Mack. A great stop in the backfield. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. They'll motion the tight end across the formation. Second down, they go again with Henry. And a gain of four gets him right to the midfield stripe. So if you've been playing defense in this one, there's a little bit of the good and some bad because they did give up the touchdown run to him earlier but shut him down otherwise. Outside of that, you're exactly right. I would say they've contained him very well. The Titans on third down. Six conversions and nine tries. They've done a great job of picking these up. This is third and eight. But Cockrell holds it in left side. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. So eight yards on the completion there, and that'll bring up fourth down. I thought maybe when he caught, he'd have a good chance of getting that first down, but that's a nice job of holding him up and preventing him from getting to the sticks. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now as he's on to punt for Tennessee. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. Herbert setting up to throw on first down. And that was going to be off target and incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Justin Herbert looking to pass. A little short pass. This is Everett. The catch and run there, good for 16 and a first. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. Play action this time for Justin Herbert. Able to hook up with Williams here on the out route. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. 
Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. From the 50, here's Herbert. On the throw, led him too much that time. It's incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earned a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. To the air again, Herbert. And the pressure gets there. He'll go down. It's a sack. And it is going to bring us to the two-minute warning. The safety blitz turns out to be a great call defensively as they sack him for a loss of nine. On third down, here's Eckler. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. Fourth down, J.K. Scott ready to punt it away. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, and then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. On first down, Tannehill. He's got it complete, Derrick Henry. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. Strong gain of 24. Yeah, big play there. And when you have a running back that you can use like a wide receiver, when he has that kind of versatility, you do as they did there. Get him out of the backfield and give those defensive backs something else to worry about. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Now it's Tannehill. A short throw taken in by Conquo. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Titans moving quickly here. They're in the hurry up. Here's Tannehill now on second down. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. It's another zone defense. It looks like it's open for possibilities, but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Tannehill throwing again. And that is incomplete. That close on third down, I think everybody probably expecting a run. Instead, they go to the air on third and short yardage. I realize this is a passing league, and they're liable to throw the ball on any down and distance. But that short, I do question the call. Run the football and pick it up. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And the L.A. offense ready for this next possession tie ball game still a little more than a minute to go in the half the question can they put something together here try to take that lead into intermission I would have to think that would be the goal for sure I don't think you sit on anything here here's your opportunity push it downfield as you mentioned it's a tie game so minus a disaster on your part you've got that in your back pocket go ahead and try and get some points and feel great going into the half Herbert on first down now and that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far, but on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Now it's Herbert. Man open left side, it's Williams. The Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts. 
It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Here's Herbert. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. He was out there waving his arms saying, throw it here, dropped it, not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a defensive back, I'm saying, not as an announcer. <laughs> just like, really? A little bit of a diva look, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. Because I think what happens is he just had too much time to think. He's wide open now. Here comes the ball. And he doesn't concentrate and drops it. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. He kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Herbert now. And this is going to be incomplete. Coverage is awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. Here's J.K. Scott set to do the punting honors. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. The Titans offense going to get one final possession in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively, they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. 30 seconds remain in this first half as they come up here first and 10. Tannehill. He's going to float this one deep right side. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. And they're not going to go quietly into this halftime break. They know they're in for a fight, so they're trying to make every possession count. They took the big shot there, but it winds up incomplete. After the incompletion, they'll try once more from the 20-yard line on second and 10. Back to throw, Tannehill. And his throw here is incomplete. Tough series for the passing game. Things just aren't clicking. Hoping they can come through on this play and get this series back on track with a completion for enough yardage for a first down. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. This time they stay on the ground. Now the Chargers will use the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now as he's on for the fifth time here today. Returnable here for Davis. So a good punt, but a solid 12-yard return. And there'll be time for maybe one final play before halftime. The Charger drive about to get going. And only six seconds on the clock, so time likely for just one play. The final shot before the break for Herbert. They'll find Everett there, complete. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. So the completion good for seven there, and it's second down. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere. In the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. So we have reached halftime here at a good one. 10-10 is our score. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. 
But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. They're all even to this point. This has the feeling of a game that could go right down to the wire. One mistake or one big play could turn out to be the difference. And ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. The Chargers getting ready to go here to start this third quarter. It's a tie football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? Well, I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tie game. No need to panic. No need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. Herbert going to lead up the Chargers here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Now he dumps this off over the middle, and he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out, and by a few inches, that'll be a first down. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch, I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. Running on first down, Eckler. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Eckler going to get it again on second down. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Going to throw on third down with Herbert. That's going to be complete to his tight end, Everett. And he is going to have the Chargers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right, safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 46. Back to throw here, Herbert. will find Williams on the slant. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game. And it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. On first down, it's Herbert. He's got it to Williams. The Chargers passing game rolling a bit here. They've got another first. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Herbert will give this one to Eckler. Aziz Al-Shair, former 49er, in on the tackle. 
So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Now Herbert with it, looking to pass. His throw incomplete. I think he's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. A field goal would get him the lead, but that's not what they're shooting for as they come up on third down. Here's Herbert. And this will be caught in the end zone for a Chargers touchdown. Quentin Johnston from 17 yards out. And the Chargers have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. They went empty backfield, all their weapons out wide, so there, were, there really was no secret here to what they were going to do. No secret, but they still had to execute it, and they still had to protect the guy throwing the ball because oftentimes when you empty the backfield, people bring pressure at you. They manage to hold in there and successfully complete the touchdown pass. Extra point up and good by Dicker, and that makes it a 17-10 score. Here's Dicker now as he'll send this one away. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. The Titans offense gears up for their first possession of the second half. And this game was all square at halftime, but now they find themselves down seven following the opening drive touchdown here in the third quarter. And they need to take a good, relaxing, deep breath, don't you think? Because right now they might start to feel like they've got to play catch up here and start matching them point for point, but it's still too early to get there. They can still run their offense, plenty of time to get back in this game. They begin with Henry. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs. Run some plays, run some clock. Allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath. Settle down and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Henry again on second down. Yeah, he'll fight for a couple as the tackle is made at about the 32. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Open man, Westbrook Akine. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. A 20th carry now for Derrick Henry. And a lane slow and materializing there as he'll get maybe a yard up to the 45. That felt like a trap because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carrier before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's second and nine. They'll run it again with Henry. And he's going to get across midfield and into Charger territory. 47 yards on the ground for him so far. Playing as a 3-4 front is really challenging for offensive linemen because they can do so many different things. But when you're running the football, if you can handle the nose tackle up front and then maybe a guard can slide up to the second level and block a linebacker, that's when you have success running the football. 
Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. And this one sails out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25. They will. 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. L.A. set to take over again on offense. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. They started on the ground with Eckler. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. Well, I think after that run, the defense get back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? On second down, here's Herbert. Working the middle here. That's complete to Everett, the tight end. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. And that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point that continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. Eckler now between the tackles. And he'll take this from one 47-yard line to the other. A gain of six. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Working with a second and four. A play fake, and now Herbert to throw. They'll get this out wide to Eckler. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. The linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Play action. It's Herbert. There's a short throw to his tight end, McKinney. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. First time they've looked his way in this game, he comes through picking up the first. Third and four, he did just enough. I mean, just enough to move the chains. And that's all you're looking for, right? Just want to keep the drive moving. You don't need the big play there. Just get to that marker that you described, and he was able to do just that. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here in this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. Out of the gun, Eckler running it. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. Herbert. connect incomplete now give them credit they took their shot but it's going to bring up fourth down the frustration evident there because he couldn't find anyone on third down and he left no doubt that he was throwing that one away Cameron Dicker on now to try the field goal from the left hash this from 53 yards out And this is good. It was running kind of gas there at the end, but he winds up getting just enough on it. And they double him up here. That makes our score 20 to 10. 
So the lead grows here incrementally, but I think the way their defense is playing, you feel okay with just getting three. They've definitely been stout so far, but now that could all change because if one guy gets loose for 70 yards, this is a different game. But as it stands, field goals are good. Just keep adding to that lead. Now, after the Dicker field goal, he's back out, ready to send it away. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. And the Titans getting set to go. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter? run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage. No yardage will be found. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Here's Tannehill. Buying time to his left. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Tannehill able to take off and pick up the first as well. He certainly isn't looking at the scoreboard out there because, to me, all he's concerned about is he analyzing the field and making most of the time left in this game. Deficit's still there, but he's starting to hit them with some big plays. On first down, Tannehill. And that is incomplete zone coverage there and they were playing deep that makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys and that time it was not much of a window to get the ball in there and it winds up incomplete second 10 coming up here in Nashville third quarter action from the gun here's Tannehill and his throw is incomplete had an open man that time and ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Out of the gun, Tannehill. He's going to wind up and air it out. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. So one first down on that drive, and that's it. Forced to take the deep shot on third down and couldn't hit it. Now they have to punt this one away. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now as he's on to punt for Tennessee. And a fair catch called for and made at the 12-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Chargers will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. Herbert and the Chargers now with a first and 10 at their own 13. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. He's got his man. That's Everett, the tight end. A good pick up there, a 22. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They'll run out of the gun with Eckler. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. 
Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. This a second and seven from the 37. Now it's Herbert. And this is caught by Williams. And he will be taken down, but a big pickup there on what's going to be the final play of the third quarter. Three quarters in the books. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Nashville. It's Charger football, and they've got the lead as well as we begin the fourth quarter. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Here's Herbert. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. Picked by Kevin Byard. And the Titans are right back in this football game. Their passing game has been spectacular this afternoon. Finally, a win for the defense. You think maybe there was an adjustment there. Finally gained a measure of, I don't even know if you call it revenge, but got a play done against him, and that's been difficult for them all game long. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. The interception was a great starting point, but now they need points pretty quickly, down two scores. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 21. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free and it's second down. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple of incomplete passes, bring up a third and ten. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. They'll fake the handoff. Now Tannehill forced out to his left, and he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. The decision to tuck and run gets him three, but that's not enough. Now it's four. Nice call on defense, rolling out the nickel package for that big third down play, and they did an excellent job locking down coverage and forcing him to try and run for it, and he doesn't get there, which brings up a big fourth down call. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now as he's on to punt for Tennessee. The call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt, and it'll be Charger football here as they take over. Herbert going to lead up the Chargers here, first and 10 at their own 24. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. 28 yards the gain there on the catch and run. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on offense because to me, this drive is what is known as a put away drive. You score here, that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Uh, here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. Short completion, just four yards, and that will bring up second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. From the 44-yard line, here's second and six. Herbert now. He's got Allen. 
And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. This offense so far on third down, they've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. They'll try to pick up the first with Eckler, and he's going to run into a brick wall right in the middle of the field, and I don't think he got there. Call it no gain that time, and they're going to be left looking up at a fourth and one. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it, get the first down, close it out. Yeah, Charles, all things considered, I guess that's not a critical miss at this stage, is it? No, but still everything helps when you're trying to finish off a ball game. And you're right, not critical in terms of the scoreboard and the team, but the guy with the golden foot, he knows he's only as good as his last kick. And here comes Tennessee as they get sent to take the field. Their defense was able to hold serve, albeit with a little help from that missed field goal as they settle in now first and ten. Tannehill now to throw. DeAndre Hopkins making the catch. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. Here's Tannehill. Over the middle, he's got the tight end, Wesco. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. A first down carry for Henry. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. A gain of three, second down. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Seven yards left for second down. Ball at the 10. Back to throw, Tannehill. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. That was a touchdown if he could have hung on. Instead, it was a well-timed collision to jar that one free. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Now it's Tannehill. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Back-to-back -back incompletions of what was once a nice drive. Stalled out here. I'm going to give credit to the secondary partner. Never gave up as they gave up a few yards, and they came through on that play to deny that pass and force the fourth down. The folks' kick is good, and that will tighten this one up a bit. Now a one-score game at 20-13. to 13. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. Now 
After the main field goal back out is Nick Folk to kick this one off. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. The offense for Los Angeles returns to the field. Their lead back down to one score after the field goal a moment ago, so they'll be looking to string together a few first downs, likely on the ground as they begin first and 10. the play fake to Eckler it's Herbert he finds his target Allen first down yardage on the first play of the drive give him 14 well it may seem a little unorthodox to some people got the lead fourth quarter yet he's still firing away I think he believes that's the best way to go ahead and win the game yeah a lot of coaches say let's just run the football be conservative he's sticking to his game plan now that is his game and that's what they're gonna ride on first down it's Herbert Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Normally, he's pretty reliable. He usually catches what's thrown to him. On that play, he simply dropped it. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Back to throw here, Herbert. I know tight ends love this route because a lot of times they'll take the block first and get a little bit of space and then come across the middle because in their mind, they're thinking catch the ball and then drop the hammer on the little guys in the secondary. Unable to drop the hammer, he just dropped the pass. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Herbert back to the air. And that will be incomplete critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there that clock keeps rolling has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock really increases their chances of closing this one out now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline on is the punter scott here as he gets this one away and that one hits at the seven but bounds into the end zone and that'll be a touchback Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize. Like going to the county fair, you don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. They'll start this drive out on the ground. 54 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Looking left side, and he's got him in. That's Hopkins. And 11-yard pickup for the Titans in the first down. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by touchdown here in the four. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day. One score game. First and ten here. Now Tannehill. throw is going to be incomplete. Certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. Line of scrimmage again the 37 as they line up second and 10. Tannehill. Got his man a conqueror. Seven catches for him now in this last one. The first down. And these offense can get their tight ends involved. They can move the football. Here, a nice route. Able to look it in and picks up the first down. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and ten. Tannehill throwing again. 
And brought in downfield by Burks. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. 23 yards, the final tally. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and no more. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. And a good run as he manages seven yards down to the 17. Well, there's an example of patience being rewarded. Ran the ball on first down and got stuffed. Most people would scream, throw the ball here in this situation. They stayed with their roots, stayed with running the football, and they got rewarded. Tannehill on third down. And that almost intercepted. Oh, they would have loved to have their first pick of the game right there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. Oh, this defense knows. Fourth quarter, they need to make a play. That one was ripe for the taking. Could have changed the complexion of the ball game, but it winds up incomplete. They'll run for it with Henry. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. Thought they might throw the football with a little chunk that they had remaining on fourth down, but they ran it, they got it. And the reason they were able to get it done, he ran that play with conviction, didn't he? Understood he would get a little bit of help from his friends up front, but it was really on him to go ahead and make the power move and get it done, and that he did. 70 yards rushing for him now to this point. Consecutive positive runs for him on the last two snaps. He certainly appears to be trying to put the offense on his back and just move them down the field when his number is called. The way he's running it, I keep going back to him. Four yards to go on second down from the seven. Again, it's Henry. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Here's Tannehill. And that is incomplete. That has to feel like a very unsatisfying drive, right? You move the ball all that way, and then you can't convert on third down. But it was satisfying up until that point. Almost like a great movie. And then the film cuts out before the big ending. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They snap it to Tannehill. He right, forces one there. It's a potential dagger as it's intercepted. Picked off by Asante Samuel Jr. And the Chargers are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. The fourth down, they felt compelled to go for it, and he throws the INT. Yeah, he knows that you can't take a sack there, so he had to try and force one in. Now, this might not be a throw he makes if we're in the second quarter, but he had to take the chance there, and this one wound up being intercepted. The Charger offense making their way back out there. Another important fourth quarter series coming up. That last INT helping to maintain their slim advantage. Herbert and the Chargers now with a first and 10 at the 20. He'll hand off here to Eckler. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. Yeah, second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. This a very important drive, and that incompletion leads to a very important third down here if they're going to try and get the football back. Yeah, getting it back at 
absolutely crucial to their chances to try and win this game. I would expect a lot of pressure here. They can't afford to let them continue to get first downs and eat away at the clock. Going to throw on third down with Herbert. And that is incomplete. And this defense definitely in his head there on third down, and he's pretty fortunate. They didn't call for grounding on this one. That was a good 10 feet over everyone's head. Here's J.K. Scott now as he's on to punt for L.A. It'll be a net of 40 yards there following a 43-yard punt, three-yard return, and we have reached the two-minute warning. So now Tannehill and the Titans down 20 to 13, just over two minutes to go. They'll have one play here just north of the two-minute warning. on the last drive to Henry so the Titans in possession of the football here as we get your reset they come up on a second down now in a game that looks like it's going to go down to the wire another try second and ten now here's Tannehill over the middle, he has a Kakuo. Nice, well-coached, a team that understands what's going on. They still have time to work the middle of the field as they just did there. Here now, third down. Tannehill to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Hopkins. And he will have a Titans first down, and he's going to have it by plenty. Able to get eight yards there on third and two. Very sharp here to start this drive, three for three. Yeah, I like the way he's running this two-minute drill. Very sharp, very precise in throwing the football. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. As a corner, you have to be able to run with guys step for step downfield of man coverage and make up ground quickly in zone. You have to put yourself in position to make plays just like that one we saw there. But just over a minute to go in the football game. Second and ten. Tannehill. Oh, no, he lost the football. But this will fortunately wind up out of bounds. You can almost see inside his face mask there the look of relief. <laughs> he coughed it up, but it goes out of bounds. They keep it. Someone carrying around the lucky horseshoe, aren't they? If I were him, I'd go out and play the lottery after that one. A very fortunate man. And they're operating in plus territory here. They're thinking points. Definitely don't want to lose the football at this juncture. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Ooh, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle, so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. They'll try again here, second and ten. Throwing Tannehill. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. Brandon, that's just football 101. If you're out of the pocket, you've got to get rid of the football in this situation. You cannot take a sack in a two-minute drill. Boy, well, here's a big one. You can just feel it. This is third down. Now. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. No choice but to go. Here's fourth down now. 
Desperation time for Tannehill on fourth down. This is caught inside the 15. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go in the football game. Here's first and goal. Now Tannehill. That is caught at the seven yard line. Now the Titans will use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. The six yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Tannehill. And his ball is caught. It's a touchdown. And now in the final seconds, they're a PAT away from likely getting this thing to overtime. Obviously, the excitement level here is almost a fever pitch. Down one is tempted to go for two. <laughs> I say you go ahead and kick the extra point. You got the home crowd carried into overtime. I'm with you. I do see some fans though holding up two fingers. Easy now. Yeah, but they're not the ones who have to actually make that call, are they? On for the extra point is Folk. The Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. Now Folk for the extra point. And we may very well be headed to overtime. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And the touchdown and PAT mean we are tied here in the final minute of play. This one, all we could have asked for. All tied, final minute as the kick's away here. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. This is first and 10. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Here's second down. Herbert to throw. Herbert has it knocked free. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble. That could have been trouble. And we have free football over time. Here we go, my friend. And the way this game played out, this is exactly how it should end, going to overtime, because neither one got an advantage today. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. So four quarters couldn't settle a winner, and now the Chargers going to get the first opportunity here in OT as the kick is away. Here's Darius Davis on the return, and he'll be stopped up at the 25. The Chargers ready to take over. 
And everyone knows the OT rules, Charles, but pretty simple formula. They go down and get a field goal. We continue play. But if they can find the end zone on this possession, ball game over. And as meticulously as all teams plan for a game, I don't doubt for a second on that offense coordinator's play sheet, he's got some overtime plays that he wants to run. I know it sounds crazy, but they plan for everything. First and 10 all the way throughout the game, second and seven, whatever. Right now, he's looking at that play sheet saying, if we get to overtime, what can we break out that they haven't seen? Brought down on the play by Amani Hooker. Short gain there to start overtime. Almost a tester play, wasn't it? Wanted to see if the guys on defense were going to fit the gaps the correct way because we're in overtime. So it's not just physical tiredness out there, right? Mentally, are you still doing what you're supposed to do? And they were up to the task on that play. And certainly fatigue on both sides of the football. These two have hooked up nine times now this afternoon as they pick up the first. They go back to that well. He's had a great game. Defensively, they haven't been able to stop him. Same thing here in overtime. And sometimes that goes to the play caller's ego because a lot of times you have so many different plays you want to call. But when you spot a matchup that's working for you or a player that has the hot hand, keep giving it to them. That tells me you're mature as a play caller and it's working for them in overtime. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. Back-to-back -back completions, and that puts them in enemy territory. And we're always looking for that elusive term, momentum, aren't we? And I think they're building it with the back-to-back -back completions. Now they feel like they can either take a shot or continue to build it the way that they're doing now. Safe throws, get it to their playmakers, and see what happens. Now Herbert. He'll get this to Eckler. And now look at this, big game, but a fumble. He'll get it inside the 20. It's picked up by the Titans. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And my, how the tables have turned. They had a chance inside the red zone, punch that thing in and end it. Now we're going the other way. And it's real easy to just look at them and say, boy, what an error, what a mistake you made. But how about the defense yeah, coming up huge? There. Let's give them a little bit of credit, keeping their team in the game, because if they score a touchdown there, it's game over. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. One team squandered opportunity. It's another team's chance to win this thing. They forced that clutch turnover, and now all they need is a field goal here to win this ball game. Could not be set up much better, could they? A takeaway on defense. Now it's up to that offense to find a way to put themselves in position for the game-winning points. Touchdown, field goal, they don't care. Just find a way to win it. That's a nice throw there, and he's obviously feeling pretty good because, remember, he had a touchdown pass on the last drive, and here he comes out throwing again, and they wind up getting good yardage and a first down right out of the gate. They'll fake the handoff. Now Tannehill. DeAndre Hopkins making the catch across midfield. He's on his way, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown and a game-winner in OT. And that's what we had here. What an exciting finish on that last big play. And I think that as we look at it, when you're talking about a great finish, which went along with a game that obviously was dramatic because we did get into overtime, what type of play calls do you have left? What have you not shown? Or what have you made an adjustment to what you've worked out all the way through that's going to give you the play we saw to win the game. Because I know everyone's thinking that that was something they just drew up. It might have been something they've been working on, and now they got the right matchup. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. The Titans are winners here as we say so long from Nashville.